All right, so we have a quiz tomorrow. We're reviewing in two ways. The second worksheet, 15B, is very specifically questions that will be like on the quiz, okay? This 13B is not something I'm going to ask you, 13A and B, is not something I'm going to ask you to do on the quiz but I went through it third period and they said it was very helpful because it kind of cemented some ideas in their head. Does that make sense? So we're gonna talk about this. First of all, do you remember yesterday we addressed the difference between polynomial function and rational function? What's the difference? How about you just give me an example of a polynomial function? That's easier. X squared plus Yeah, you don't have this warm-up question. I don't know what you said. I, okay, that's a polynomial function, right? What makes a rational function? X plus seven over seven. All right, as long as it has a denominator, top and bottom, they're both polynomials. We're good. Everybody okay? Because you need to know the difference in the vocabulary for the quiz, because it says. Write a rational function that has a blah, blah, blah. Write a polynomial function that has a blah, blah, blah. All right. This is an example of write a rational function. You don't have this, so just eyes up here, pay attention, think about this. Y equals rational means it's going to have division bar, right? Okay. Read the question. See if you can tell me anything about it. You might want your green sheet out. Four zeros? Class, yep. Zero. We have two zeros. What does that tell us? There is a degree two polynomial where? X intercepts come from the top or the bottom? Okay, x intercepts is when the whole thing equals zero, right? Because it's called a zero. Will the whole thing equal zero when the top is zero or the bottom is zero? The top is zero, okay? When the bottom is zero, we have undefined, right? And that would be where there's asymptotes. Does that help? Okay, so what does this mean? If there's a zero at zero, at x equals zero, there's an x up top, yay. X equals 4 is a 0. X minus 4 is on top. Now you're getting the hang of it. Okay. Vertical asymptotes at X equals 1. Awesome. And there's also an X minus 6. Now it gets a little tricky. What is the degree right now? Degree 2 over degree 2, so it's equal weight, right? But it says it's supposed to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. When does that happen? When it is bottom heavy. Use your green sheets. So we need to add something to the bottom. If we put an x on the bottom, what happens? We have a hole and not an x-intercept at zero, right? And if we added something else in the denominator, it would mean there'd be a vertical asymptote there. So I'm going to go with we shouldn't add any more factors, but what could we do to make the bottom a higher degree? Yeah, how about we just throw on a squared here? Now is it degree, degree 2 over degree 3? And it's bottom heavy? And so on. We're good? Yeah. Is that the only right answer? Yeah. No. Okay? Yeah. But that's one right answer. All right. This one, I'm going to change the question a tiny bit at the end, but somebody start me out. Y equals what's going on? X minus 2 where? Good job. X plus 3 on the top. Okay, we got those. Okay, 
x minus 4 on the bottom. Sorry, I got confused. Too many people saying too much at once. The point discontinuity, what's that fancy language for? There's a hole at... Okay. I'll talk more about that other in a minute. But x plus 5 where? Very good. Okay. Everything works. And what would the degree be? It's top heavy right now. So we would have to divide something out, right? I, I mean, we'd, it would have a slant asymptote. We'd find it by dividing. This business with zero, it says after we divide this out, we should get a zero. So this isn't really working. But I'm not going to ever ask you that. So can we just say the whole has an x value of negative 5 and call it a day? Okay. So... This is the same thing with an added twist or two. The added twist, part of which is we're going to look at some end behaviors written in limit form. That's really kind of a calculus thing. So that's a bonus today, okay? Leave me a little calculus. The other weirdness that isn't going to be on any test or quiz, uh, can I add an extra page real quick? I'm going to talk about this idea in just a second. When you have an asymptote over here, okay, two things are possible. You could have a graph where it does something like this, or you could have a graph that does something like this. Okay, those are horrible drawings. Here around the asymptote, there if this is x equals 5, that is in the denominator, yes, because it's an asymptote. And it would look like that. When you have an asymptote like this and the graph is doing the same thing on both sides, either both sides of it is going up or both sides it's going down. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like this little volcano shape of red here. That means that this factor... is going to be an even multiplicity that made both ends go up or both ends go down. Okay, We'll get to that in just a second. All right, somebody start me out. This notation is on the quiz next, the test next week, not on the quiz. But instead of just saying end behavior, it says list it like this. It's a multiple choice question, so you don't have to write it. But this is saying as x approaches negative infinity, it's talking about the left. What's this graph doing on the left? It's going up, so we write infinity. What is the second one asking? What is it doing on the far right? The graph is going up. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but where's all four arrows of this graph? <laughs> up. Okay, so it's not real tricky. But this notation means as x gets close to 3, and that plus sign means from the right. So as I get closer to 3, coming from the right is this piece right here, and it's going up. If I do in green, this means from the left. So as I get closer and closer to 3 would be this piece. Okay, <laughs> badly drawn. But coming from the left, it's supposed to be going also up. Okay, so that wasn't super tricky because all four arrows were going up. All right. We're supposed to write the equation. Somebody tell me one thing. Morgan, can you tell me one thing, anything from the graph? Sure. Four zero over here is a zero. So who can help her write a factor that has to do with that? X minus four. guys are all over this. X minus 4, it's doing a bounce, so I'm hearing multiplicity 2 or squared. Numerator or denominator? Go ahead. Okay, look at here. This is X equals 3. Is that vertical asymptote? 
So Basma says that x minus 3 is in the denominator. Everybody agreeing with her? Yeah. Okay. What else you got, Riley? So there's another 0 over here at negative 3. So there's an x plus 3 in the numerator because it's a 0. And it's also squared because it's bouncing. Are we good? Awesome, guys. And there's a y-intercept. You guys are way ahead of me. What? What's... Okay. We're going to have to put this in. But before we put that point in, that 0, 24, we need to talk about the goofiness on this page. What do you think, Riley? Maybe, um, x plus 3 in the denominator is squared, so x minus 3. It was x minus 3, right? Yes. So but that be squared this is going to be squared because both ends near there are going up. That's not something I'm going to ask you, okay? But it now what do we end up with at this very moment for degree in the numerator and denominator? Degree 4 over degree 2. So it's like we have an x to the 4th over an x squared. If we divided that out, what would we get? x squared. So what shape should the end be? x squared is a? Parabola. Okay. If you squint your eyes really hard, do you see this and this as maybe being a piece of a parabola? <laughs> it's doing this, and then over here it's doing this. It's just got some goofiness going on in here, but otherwise it's just a broken parabola. It's the window, it makes it harder. If I were able to zoom out, and I don't think I can do that. Let me try. Yeah, it, this one is curving. It's just hard to tell from the picture. I got, I got what you're saying, though. I don't know if I can. Yeah, my computer is very unhappy today. I was trying to shrink this down a little bit to see if it would work. But it doesn't. Oh, now it's just going to slide it around. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not the tablet, it's my actual computer is freaking out today. I don't know where I can shut, that would help. But. All right, um, one more try and then I'm going to give up on this one. This is what I had to do earlier today. What are we working on right now, this one? As soon as I said switch to it, let me do something. Okay. Now is it back where it belongs? Yeah. All right. I'm going to erase this. Don't do it with that. Use your tablet because that actually works. Sorry. We need to finish. Somebody pointed out it showed the y-intercept at 0, 24. We can actually find the stretch then. Okay. Maybe if it's happy with me. All right. I think we're going to skip finding the stretch. How's that sound? No, you don't have to do it on the quiz. You don't have to write an equation. Nope. And it's done this about three times today. What is that? Frustrated? Is there one that says frustrated? Probably. It's probably something really weird. Attitude. I am touching the right mouse button. Okay. I'm going to try again. Then we're going to skip this one if it doesn't work. Try taking the eraser out of there, you think? In all the way, you think that's it? <laughs> aggravated. There you go. My word of the day will be aggravated. Your word of seven power. Cranky. Cranky. I can do cranky. All right. We're going to try going to a new slide. I don't think that's going to help, honestly. I, you know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try to save this. All 
All right, can we switch for a minute to worksheet 15? I'll see if this helps anything. Probably won't. I really wanted to do that worksheet. We'll see if it comes back and works in a minute. But it would. Yeah, we could do the Elmo in a second. Let's just tape this for now. This is the preview for the quiz, okay? So with your green sheet in hand that you do get to use on the quiz tomorrow, what's going on that we need to start by doing here? What's it say at the very top? Factor. What can we do to the top? Pull out a 2. How does the bottom factor? Be careful. It took me two tries. We tried 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1, they asked me earlier, in a different class. But the middle term is what we got to check, right? Because this is a 2x and a 2x, and that middle doesn't make a 4x, okay? So then we tried 4x plus 1 and x plus 1, and that gave us a 4x squared. That's supposed to say plus 1 back there. Plus 1 plus 4 would be 5x in the middle. 1 times 1 is 1. Can we all agree that we're not all equally factor-able? <laughs> some of us factor very quickly, and some it's a real struggle, okay? Just take your time and factor and, tell, and keep checking until you figure it out, okay? Don't just guess, because it's going to make a big deal on these graphs. All right, what's going on next? Domain? Negative 1 or negative 1 fourth? Any order? And you can write cannot equal. Notice the blank is very small. I wouldn't want to try to fit in. <laughs> Uh, interval notation because it would be like really long. Okay, vertical asymptotes are actual lines, so you need an equation of a line. X equals negative one fourth, and there is another one at X equals negative one. I would prefer you wrote it as two separate because it's two separate lines on the graph, okay? If you just put a comma, I'm not going to but this is cannot equal, and this is does equal. And the difference is this is a boundary for the graph. It's not actually part of the graph. All right, horizontal. How'd you get that? Okay. You put a zero in and got out a negative six. What is that? That's the y-intercept. Good call. We're all right. What else is going on? Horizontal asymptote has to do with degree. It's degree 1 over degree 2, so we have bottom heavy, and a lot of you have memorized that that means y equals 0. Is our horizontal asymptote. Everybody okay? All right, the zeros, we just went through this on the other worksheet. The zeros are what makes the top 0, so we'd have... Now, okay, somebody said this earlier today as well. That's what I just heard again. 2 cannot equal 0. If it had an x out there, this would be right, yes? But there's no x. There's only one x here, so there's only one 0. Because 2 cannot equal 0. Does that help? Okay. All right, be careful. Um, there are a total of like three questions like this. What else might I have? One that has a hole, one that has equal weight with leading coefficients, one that's uh, bottom heavy or top, top heavy we didn't have yet, okay? You get the idea? All right. There are three graphing questions. I'm just going to do one with you. It says, give the, given the rational function, name all the x and y intercepts as ordered pairs. Make sure you do both. Write the equation of all vertical asymptotes, and then write the equation for the end behavior. That can be a horizontal asymptote, or an oblique asymptote, or an end behavior function. Please, guys, notice it says end behavior equation. That's like y equals, could be y equals 0, y equals 3, y equals x plus 6 y equals x squared plus 7, whatever it is. It's not asking you 
Somebody told me earlier today, are we doing this? Okay, that is describe the end behavior. It's not the same. I didn't mean to make that confusing. The end behavior equation is all the stuff at the bottom of the green sheets. You with me? Has to do with degree. Okay, back up. Intercepts, anybody? If I put in a 4, the numerator will be 0. Everybody okay? Do you need me to write it up here? 4 minus x equals 0 means 4 equals x, right? Okay. Um, what's the other one? When you put in a 0... Oh, we didn't factor yet. That's what somebody's... But the other intercept is when you put a 0 in for x, what will we get? 4 over negative 2, yes? 4 minus 0, 0 minus 0 minus 2 would be 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2. Vertical asymptotes, now that I factored. Was it important I factored first? No, because the this is a positive four. Okay. Um it is important you factor first because you won't know if there's a hole, right? Until it's all factored. Because there could be a common factor top and bottom, so be careful. All right. Um end behavior, degree what over what? Degree one over degree two. Everybody good? So that means it's approaching y equals 0. Okay. I'm going to use my line tool and cheat. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I have, I'll asymptote at 2, an asymptote at negative 1, and a horizontal asymptote at 0. It says in the directions, make sure you graph labeling all those. So this is x equals 2. This is x equals negative 1. Negative 1. This is y equals 0. I also have two ordered pairs, 4, 0, and 0, negative 2. How many chunks are there to this graph that I'm going to have to do? Three. three, because with two asymptotes, there's going to be three places to look at. Okay, now we'll see if we mess up the computer by switching to this. All right, I typed this in. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. It's the one that's on down here, right? 4 minus x over x squared minus x. You good? Um, the graph paper here was just negative 7 to 7, so I just did a zoom 6. I was too lazy to actually change it to 7 and 7. Okay, is that enough information? Is that window okay? We... We could zoom in a little bit. We could also look at the table. I don't think there's going to be nice ordered pairs. Okay. Out past negative 1, well, negative 2, 1 1.5 if we want to put that in there. But basically it's doing this shape over here. I'm not going to be picky, okay? As long as you have that shape, I'm good. And it shouldn't touch across that asymptote as far as I can tell. We could trace out there a little ways trace negative six it's still positive yes okay if you look at the table again which i'm not going to actually do it's like one negative 1.5 is an order pair so this is a little parabola shape that just barely goes above that zero i don't really care as long as you have that parabola shape in there we're good and then over here what do you we have a dot there how can we have a dot there it actually crosses the intercept, it crosses that, that horizontal asymptote. If I do trace um, 4, it's at 0, but as I go further to the right, what happens? It's negative. But is it getting anywhere very fast? No, it stays really close. So we need to do, comes over here, crosses, and stays just below there. Yeah, well, it stays even closer than that, but I can't draw very well. We good? I'm not going to be super picky, I promise. All right, what do we have to do here? 
Factor the top. How does the bottom factor? Where is the hole? When x is negative 5, you can write that. You can write this. If you want to be an overachiever, you can actually find the ordered pair. You only get brownie points. Okay. So if we all found it, does it mean we have to have brownies? I think so. I think <laughs> all right. If you, how would you find that? Do you remember how to find it? You, yeah, you'd have to find. You could if you plug this whole thing in. It, it'll say it'll say undefined. It'll say undefined because it's a hole. Unless you canceled that factor first, right? And then it would work. If you cancel the factor and plug in the negative 5, you get negative 10 over negative 3, which is 10 thirds. Okay. What? I said there's the hole in my plan. Ha, ha, ha. Very good. There's the hole in his plan. Yes, we got it. All right, but as long as you write x equals negative 5, I'm happy. Okay, moving on. Why is everybody going to get this one wrong? Nobody's going to get this wrong, right? I gave a big hint here. It says not a rational function. This is review from the last quiz. How would we write this? The polynomial function, degree 6, x-intercepts only at 7, 0, negative 2. X minus 7. And she wants me to put a squared. X plus 2. And an X. You want those both squared? That's degree 6. Is that the only right answer? No, we should put the degree Could we do an X to the 4th, an X minus 7, and an X plus 2? Somebody earlier today said, can't we just do an x to the 6? No. Yes. No. 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 That's degree what is this? Eight. This is degree 8. Eight. <laughs> All right. You get the idea? Okay. There is one question on the quiz that is review from the last quiz that says do the long division. Okay, I need to, guys, do not let me forget. I will pass your quizzes back, okay? Even though there's like 10 people who still haven't taken it, I'm going to pass them back today because you need to see that before you take a new quiz. I hate, okay, when people, I, if my daughter's Rock Bailey English teacher is listening, she hasn't returned their last paper and they have another paper due. So how do you, yeah, how do you, how do you know, how you, how do you know if you even did it right? And it's the paper. same kind of paper. It's read this article and write an argumentative statement. and come. I'm like, if you don't know if you did the first one right, how would you hand in the second one and find out you did them both wrong? Okay, moving on. Oh, that's a 22. Hey, guys, I got us off topic. We need to do this. Who can tell me how to do this quickly? Okay, because 5x times 3x squared gives us 15x cubed. This is where some of you fell apart. You got to distribute that to this whole thing, though, right? So we got plus a 10x squared minus a 5x. Did I do that right? Okay. Then some of you forget to subtract. Remember, you are subtracting each of these. So now we have what? 12x squared plus 8x, and that was supposed to say minus 15, I think. Okay, now what? 3x squared into 12x squared goes exactly... Yeah, not 6. <laughs> Just kidding. 4 times. Okay, 4 times 3x squared is 12x squared plus 8x minus 4. Okay, don't get the remainder wrong because you didn't subtract. 
Okay, we end up with negative 15 plus 4, which is negative 11, not 9. Some of you did that on the last quiz. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy to do. Okay. What, when they're, it, like if it says 32 minus 23, I always get 23. I get half the people who write 9 and half the people who write 11. I don't know why. We just all impose transpose the numbers do something okay they're one apart so yeah okay um when we go to write this as a remainder it should be plus negative 11 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 and if you wanted to write minus and leave this a positive 11 it's the same thing but don't leave nothing in here there really should be a plus because it's not a multiplication Okay, it's not that 5x plus 4 times that negative 11 over. I didn't count that wrong on the quiz, but I'm just saying. All right. Also on the quiz, there's one like this. It says this is a rational function, okay? Everybody good? y equals x cubed minus 4x plus 8 over x minus 6. Write the end behavior equation. Now, that could just be y equals 0 if it was bottom heavy. It could be y equals negative 4 over negative 6 or 2 thirds if there had been like a degree 6 and 6 on those something but it's not it's top heavy so what is the rule for end behavior when it's top heavy you gotta get the whole. Well, it says there is no there's no horizontal, there's no horizontal there's asymptote no but that doesn't mean that yeah that means move on and read the bottom line which says you in free calc have to find the slant asymptote or bleak asymptote or and behavior function. This one turns out to be a function because when we divide an x to the third by an x, we're going to end up with something with an x squared, yes? Oh, that has to look really funky on the graph. It's exactly like the one we were doing a minute ago. Well, it, it not exactly, but it's that, remember the one, the very first one I said how it was a fake parabola on the outside before the computer broke? Okay. Can we do synthetic division instead of long division? Okay. What goes in the little box? Not negative 6. It's the 0. It's 6. Oh, somebody said 1 O. Oh. Why did she say O? Oh? Yeah, evil, evil Hoffbauer put one with a placeholder. Okay. So there's an x cubed, 0x squared, a negative 4x, and an 8. Okay, bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply is some great big number. Do we care? No, that's why that. It's a remainder. So what's this mean? So like I started, and, and you're done, okay? You don't have to graph this necessarily on the quiz. But if you did, this is what it would look like, guys. It would be some parabola shape up here, except there'd be this spot at... 6, where the graph did some crazy business like this or something around the value at 6. But the whole rest of it is a parabola shape, okay? I'm going to try to go back to this other one and see if it's improved, because I really would like to do at least one more of these. I'm. Is it working so that I could we could find the intercept or not? No, it seems to be. We, we would say there's some stretch going on. Remember this business? So we'd put in a 0 and 24. So if I put in the 24 here for the y value, I'd have 24 equals a. What do you get up top if you put a 0 in for all those x's? 0 minus 4 squared would be a 16. 0 plus 3 squared would be a 9. And in the denominator, you get 0 minus 3 squared is 9. Oh, can we just get rid of those 9s? Yeah, we can. Life is good. Okay. What's 24 divided by 16? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> 24 over 16 is that, too. Yeah, so Three halves. That's what I said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You could put you could put a 1.5 on the top, guys. 
Yeah, you could put a 1.5 on top or you could do three halves, put the three on the top and the two on the bottom. I just wanted to show you because I really did this. Just kidding. I think it's my mouse and I'm not good with this fake mouse thing. All right, what I did, guys, I typed in my equation with an extra set of parentheses around the whole top, an extra set of parentheses around the whole bottom of the thing we just did. And then I set the window what their window was. What was their window, guys? Can you tell from their graph paper? Negative oh. Negative 8 to 8. Negative 25 to 100. Okay. Please work. Does that look like your graph on the picture? Okay. So you could, anytime they ask you to write an equation, all you got to do is type it in your calculator to see if you did it right. Okay, if we did trace zero, it comes out 24, we were in pretty good shape. Did you have a question? No? All right, I'm not using that calculator again, but I would like to try one more. You want to try two or three? We probably don't have time for both. Two? There's only four. Yeah, this one? Oh, yeah, okay. You guys work on this one. Tell me some things you know. What do you know? There's the horizontal asymptote. Why is this one? The vertical asymptote. Like, These are supposed to be asymptotes. They're just not dotted. So there's a bottom of what? X plus 1 and X minus 4. Okay. Do you think there's squares on either of those? No. Why not? Because they don't bounce on the side. Yeah, but bouncing and asymptotes are the same thing. How this side is going down and this side is going up, that has to do with these two right here, right? On the left, it's going down, and on the right, it's going up. Okay? What's happening by this one? Left is going down, right is going up. So do we have any squares in the denominator? No. What about zeros? X plus three, X minus two. Good call. Okay. No bounces? No. Degree of the numerator and denominator? Two. Degree two, degree two. What would that mean? Uh, leading coefficient over leading coefficient. You gotta make it equal twenty. You multiply the numerator by. 20. We can put eighty over two. Okay. How is <laughs> let's just go with twenty. Eighty over two. Oh, I don't know. That's boring. The computer's broken. <laughs> All right. So we need to. If we're gonna type it in the calculator. We're going to put a big giant parenthesis here and here. And we're going to set the window to this. I want to know if we did it right. I'm going to say we did. Somebody should check. I'm doing it right now. It's okay. 20 x plus 6 x minus 2. I have my entertaining you, Riley, with those. You said I only have the last one. Who is this? You can keep your choice. Whoa, that's not the right window. No, it does not look like the right window. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can see This is looking out for me. Negative 
I think I just like forgot to finish writing down the answers for this part. My sophomore year, I just forgot to finish writing down the answers. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Or I rubbed it. Did it right. Oh, I missed one. Um, how, how to find possible rational trios like this? Yeah, with the last code. That's how we put all the factors of you know, all the factors of the last term over all the factors of the first term and plus or minus. Uh, like, I, I have no freaking Oh my goodness, guys, it's still recording. No one told me so. Um, well, yeah, this